Good morning, everybody. I'm Susan Cornelius from Accelerate to Solutions. As we go through this particular deck of slides, I'd like you to understand that it's actually a pitch deck for how to do a pitch deck. Now, what do you do a pitch deck for? So far, if you haven't had a chance to take a look at what's available at www.logorainforest.com, it's the only uh, university URL that is actually .com, you'll see all the videos of the things we've done. We've talked a lot about talking to customers and trying to figure out whether or not they're interested in buying your product. We've talked about having a business model canvas, which is not a form to fill out. It's actually a process of uh, creating assumptions and planning for getting money. Today, we're gonna talk about the next step, which is taking that pick, pitch deck and creating it so that you can talk to a wide group of people about what you're doing. So let's talk about what a pitch deck is for. The goal is to stimulate interest in what it is that you're doing. Um, it could be, in the case of one person I just got done talking to, uh, getting providers to provide you certain kinds of product at a certain level of quality for your business because you're selling their products, okay? You're kind of doing arbitrage. You're not doing your own growing. You're not doing your own mixing of chemicals or herbs. You're getting it from other people. What do you use it for? Well, most people think money is the goal in setting up a business. I'm not gonna tell you it's not. I'm gonna tell you the main goal though is to raise money to accelerate your plan. Because if you can't accelerate your plan and three years later you're still at the same size, you're gonna be disappointed in yourself, but you're also not gonna have the income that you need. So what we wanna do is here at the SDC is accelerate your plan. We also want people to gain interest and commitment as a sponsor, a partner, a channel, a team member, and what also should be on here is a customer. You have to have a way of talking to them. So how do you talk up to them? Well, you'll see up there at the top that I've got what I call the 10, 20, 30 rule. This pitch deck that is used for all these purposes is no more than 10 slides. It takes no longer than 20 minutes to do. And all the printing you see on my slides are 30 point fonts. If you can't use a 30 point font, you have to go to a smaller font when you're putting this thing together. Well, unfortunately, you've got too much on the slide. So we're gonna talk about your pitch deck actually only being 12 minutes long with a total of 20 minutes to talk to people. And the reason why you have to plan for that is if somebody comes in and says, I wanna partner with you and they ask you to do a presentation to their team, you don't always know how much time you've got. And you will ask that at the beginning. So let's take a look at the next slide. On a single sheet of paper, just any sheet of paper, I don't care whether it's got lines on it or what it's got, would you do me a favor and just draw a circle in the center of your piece of paper? So find a piece of paper, draw a circle. You can work on this while we're talking. And what I'd like you to do is explain, as if you were talking to family or friends, what you're doing. One of the things I'd like you to start doing as one of the steps to your success is start telling people what you're doing and being able to say that succinctly. I have an Etsy store. It sells the following products. My goal is to help people feel better by using natural, good tasting products. Oof, okay? So take one minute to write down your startup or your nonprofit or what your business do does because some of you may actually be business owners who are wanting to go to your next step. The first slide is always a title slide. And if we go back, boom, 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 boom. Oh, wait a minute. Well, Susan went too far. And what the heck was she doing? Well, if you go back, your title slide looks like this. It has what your title is. So it's the name of your company. It's your title. Um, if you don't have a title, uh, don't call yourself the CEO because if you're the only person in the company, Call yourself principal or founder. In my case, I'm principal and chief instigator. And in case you're wondering how I got the title chief instigator, it was given to me by people who work with me. So pitch deck is 10, 12 minutes on a single sheet of paper. You put a circle and you're gonna start writing down what your company does or what your dream does inside that circle. This is what's on your title slide. It's really simple. And this is where you say, hi, I'm Susan Cornelius. I'm principal and founder of Accelerate to Solutions. I work with startup companies, helping them get their first level of funding. I've worked with over 477 companies, and out of that, there has been 70 launches. Now, there's a difference in the numbers, and it doesn't always have to do with they had a bad idea. It has to do with how well they planned. And we're talking about taking that plan, putting it in a pitch, 
presenting it to people for the purposes, uh, purpose of stimulating interest, getting customers, and getting funding. That was a pitch, by the way. Descri okay, so the second thing you do in your next slide is describe the pain you're alleviating. You want everybody to buy into what you're doing. You want to paint a picture of the world you're in. I call it a storyboard, mostly because in my spare time when I have nothing else better to do, I'm a cartoonist and I love telling stories. And they, they're little boxes and each box tells the story of what we're doing. The companies I work with actually draw storyboards so they can present to people what it is they're doing. First, it starts with the problem. Then it says how it works. And then it says, this is the benefit or the opportunity. And we're gonna talk about the slides that follow that. You wanna ensure your audience understands the value of what you're doing. One of the teams I'm working with is working on, uh, on something uh, that is a compressor system for something called Tanacos in uh, um, uh, developing countries in Mexico, Central America, and South America. Theirs is a social uh, effort. Theirs is a nonprofit effort, trying to reach people who have to cart their water every day and somewhere or another have a line from the storage container, which is called the Tanaco, into the house. When I saw their pitch, I almost cried. They, they participated in the pitch contest because what they got into was that opportunity includes having a roof over your head, food to eat, and fresh water. And then they explained why, because it was from their background. Little point, case in point, some 17.5% of Americans don't have flowing water in their homes. So you can see an example there of what would be a value prop. I've given that to you an exa example. You have to be able to tell people why you're doing what you're doing. Um, I wish I could tell you that people who pursue money and have the best technology and the best business idea in the world are the ones that get rich. Steve Jobs did, okay? But let's be clear, Steve Jobs knew he was changing how people were going to be able to change, do their work, and that's what he focused on when he was coming up with the first Macintosh, the first Macintosh computer, and all that memory and all the Apple apps. He was focused on people being able to live a better life, and that's where you need to come from as well. Next slide. What's the underlying magic? You know, it's so hard for most of us to explain this to other people. It's kind of human, you know, right? Um, at this point, if you've got a pro prototype in the, uh, the, uh, on my screen, the, uh, the logins from all of you are kind of blocking a little bit, but if you've got a prototype that you're working on or a working demo, this, this is the stage at which you demonstrate it. You can, if you can put it in your hands, you put it in your hands. For instance, if you're selling some of the best lavender in the world and you've got a lavender business, then you give a little teeny sample to everybody you're talking to in the pitch and let them rub it between their fingers and smell it. So we want to be able to tell the secret sauce. Now, how you grow it, what kind of plant you're using, the special way and you provide it an, uh, uh, an environment to grow, you're not gonna tell them all of that. You're just saying we've got a pro proprietary technology that helps you do something. And this particular pitch is from one of the companies that I'm working with, okay? You can see that it provides a, information about what it can do, its value and its benefit, and they've drawn pictures of it for their pitch but it's not telling you how it works. That's the secret sauce. Business model. Oh my goodness, this is the hardest thing in the whole wide world to do. This is how you make money. This is the time to drop the names and logos of the organizations that are already using your product. Now, what if you're brand new and you haven't done this yet? Then you drop the names and logos of the companies you'd like to be working with, okay? Explain how you make money is basic. The cost, how many units you expect to sell, and what period of time. I don't know how many of you watch uh, Shark Tank. I do. No surprise there. And on Friday night, Mark Cuban and the gang were talking to everybody, and the companies they turned down was because they couldn't tell them how they're actually going to make money. And so you're not maybe going after Mark Cuban, but you want to go to the investment bank and get some money to expand your business and pay for your website or you want to go to family and friends and ask them to donate and you'll pay them back in a certain period of time, please honor everybody by telling them how you're going to make money. And it starts with cost. It doesn't start with coming up with the size of market and taking 1% of that. Because if your market's $35 billion, you're not going to be selling $35 million in your first year. Now, some companies do. Nescafe did that when, when they uh, brought up their first gourmet um, cups for selling coffee. 
your go-to-market plan. How are you going to get to market? Are you going to use Etsy? Are you going to have a website? Are you going to go up on social media? And are you going to use all of them to get your product out there? You'd be amazed at how powerful all those social products are. And in fact, UNM has a course called Create, Sell, Bank. And I think it's on video on the, the www.logorainforest.com site. Take a look at it or enroll in the course and work with Dr. Bill Zarletta on learning how to do this kind of arbitrage. You've got to convince people that your sales plan, your go-to-market plan is going to work. And we've come up with some unusual ones. An LLC that has partners in it that contribute money and a spinoff of a, of a nonprofit that's going to use money from the profits from that company, for the sales of the Tanakos for the for-profit, to come up with the money for the nonprofit to put Tanakos in place with these converters and flowing water for families that make less than $350 American dollars per year. So it's your go-to-market plan. Competitive analysis. One of the funny things that most uh, entrepreneurs do in their pitch is they say, oh my goodness, I, you know, we've got competition, but I don't like their product. It doesn't work like ours does. Don't do that. This is a world in which everybody hears what you're saying anymore. So start with, this is our product and what it does. These are our competition. Here's the difference. Our device has artificial intelligence, learns from working on this particular problem, and over time can respond better to what it is that you need. And in that case, that story was about a robot that flips hamburgers in California. Management team. This is an opportunity on this slide to talk about who your team is. Um, some of you are probably going, oh, it's just me. Maybe you've got family members working with you. They can be on your management team for right now, and this can change, all right? We don't expect you to actually have your whole management team together. We want to know that you're planning for it, that maybe there's somebody who's going to do distribution for you and somebody who's going to do distribution and buying for you so that you can have the products on your website while you go out and sell to customers. Show your education, your work experience, it's all relevant. Let's say you used to be a nurse and you're selling herbs. In that case, what you're going to be doing is telling people, I've seen how pharmaceuticals are used. I also know from my family of origin, from my grandmother, that there are products that can be used that are native to New Mexico, which can also help with some of the same problems. So I'm focused on these alternative medicines. By the way, the alternative medicine market is bigger than the pharmaceutical market. If you have holes in your argument about how you're going to go to market, how you're going to make money, that's where you're very wise and you say to the people listening to you, and we're looking for somebody to help us, okay, so that our team can be successful in getting our product to market. And I'm pretty sure this is something maybe some of you thought about, how do I present to people that I want to borrow money from? How do I present to family and friends so they understand what I'm doing and talk about it? How do I present on a website? How do I present in social media? Creating this is going to help you do all that. One of the things that's interesting for tech companies is that most tech entrepreneurs will tell you one of three things. They will tell you, I want a three to five year forecast. That's me. I want to know the dollars and I want to know in what period of time. Others will tell you, it doesn't make any difference. I'm just going to talk to you. And if I like you, I might, may work with you. And does that happen? Yes. Um, a former student of mine came up with a plan for a easy to build respirator. I sent him to a VC I know up in Colorado. He got funding. And it, he wasn't asking for very much. And he's now got his initial prototypes working and up on YouTube for everybody all over the world to copy. We're interested in conversion rate because we're using various social media platforms. 50 out of every 300 contacts that we get will result in committed customers. Can you expect that? You probably can expect more than that if you're effectively using social media. Again, look into that Create Cell Bank course. What is key to people being interested in you and supporting you? is your financial projections and your key metrics. How are you gonna know you've reached it? One company that I'm working with right now that is a student company, we're looking at a thousand customers at $50 a piece for this pump that they're buying. And we're also looking at $55,000 worth of income in a very short period of time. And then they'll be using that money to build the nonprofit uses of these particular devices. Okay. So that's what it's meant by conversion rate. By the way, investors and people who do this kind of work, we don't speak English. If you're interested, send me an email and I'll send you the list of all the vocabulary that we use that, you know, like pitch, we use the word pitch and it's not tar and it's not, 
you know, pitching a softball. It's pitching you and your company. We want to see what your current status is. And again, if you go to Bank of America or you go to Nusenda and you're asking um, for some way of getting some money, um, and, and I don't know that Nusenda does small business loans, but maybe they do. I think they do. Um, you're going to want to have listed your key activities that you've completed and the key activities to be completed. There may be goals in here, things that aren't done. We just want to know you're thinking about it and you've got it in a plan. Your timeline or phases. I always tell people for your first version, your minimal viable product that you're going to get out there. And let's say it's you've got your Etsy website up and you've got 10 things you're selling that you've bought from other people. We just want to know what your timeline is and what phases you're going to bring in more products that fit what it is that you're doing and how it is that you're going to bring in customers. We want to know what our money is going to accomplish. So current status and over there on the right, um, you're telling us about product status, customer interviews, what they have to say about your products, patents, prototypes, um, um, people, money, brick and mortar, equipment, manufacturing, channels, distribution, partners. This could take you two slides, no more than two, because remember 10, 20, 30, 10 minutes, no, 10 slides, 20 minutes. Here's some other stuff to give you and we're almost done. So this is what a pitch does. It moves quickly and then you look at them and say, what questions, what did you see that you agree with? What features do you agree with? What's missing? Okay, so you, this isn't an in-depth, complete with all the drawings of your technology or anything that you're selling. Again, slide has to be in 30 point. And I'm not gonna read this whole thing because I always tell everybody, don't read your slides, please. Use common fonts, fonts. don't use fancy serifs uh, and stuff like that. Animate your body. Now, one of the hard things about Zoom is I can lean forward, I can lean back, I can take my hands and go like this, but I still gotta go within the confines of the, of the, the camera that I have. Use bullets, use diagrams. You've noticed that my slides are dark. Everything pops off of it. People get bored with looking at a white slide. It doesn't look professionally. So I've even told myself, Susan, you've been using white slides, so I'm not using them anymore. And pitch constantly. The more you pitch, the more you can go poof off the top of your head. I've just pitched four student companies to you in the context of doing this demonstration, what a slide deck looks like. So summarize, it's 10 slides, 20 minute presentation, 30 points, and it is all about getting you the, the attention that you need. So um, I'm gonna stop sharing, and here we are. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs>